four wonderful guests joining us today. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, maybe Christina, Christina Louie, uh, could you get us started with introductions and then, and then pass it on? Sure, thank you, Robert. Thank you for having this event today and for moderating. My name is Christina Louie. I'm a trustee on the board of trustees at the Barrel Group. And until last year, I was the chair of the board of trustees. I am a lawyer and uh, like Robert, I also am half Chinese and half Irish and Scottish. And um, I will pass it over to Christy. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Christy Donna Ng, a proud second and third generation Chinese American. Uh, and I'm a, uh, I use, um, sorry, she, her pronouns, uh, actor, writer, producer, um, and current TBG teacher in training. And I reiterate, thank you so much um, for giving us the space and inviting me to be here today. So how about maybe Christine Toy Johnson? Do you wanna go next? Sorry, I forgot to pass, sorry. The third of the, uh, of the variations of the name Christina. Yes, hi, uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm Christine Toy Johnson. Uh, for some reason, my Zoom profile deleted my pronouns, which were just on for the last Zoom call I, I was on. <laughs> Won't take it personally. Uh, she, her, I'm coming to you from the Lenape, the people, the play, the ancestral home of the Lenape people. Um, I thank you for having this. Uh, I am uh, on my mother's side, sixth generation, proud Chinese American, uh, and uh, actor, playwright, um, director, advocate for inclusion, and uh, really um, very happy to be part of the Bear Group community. Awesome. Uh, Ariel. Yep. Hey, on, everyone. Christine. Thank you. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Ariel Estrada. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm zooming in from the traditional lands of the Lenape people here in New York City. Uh, I wear a lot of hats. I'm an actor and writer and producer, uh, and I'm a uh, first generation Filipino American um, man. Uh, I am, uh, I, got, I have gray hair and a black jacket and a red shirt that says uh, Star Trek. <laughs> it says red shirt, I may not make it uh, with their Star Trek and some new hair. Anyone who's a Star Trek fan will know what that means. And there's a green background behind me. I wear a lot of hats. Um, I am the diverse, current diversity and inclusion coordinator at Actors' Equity Association uh, and the marketing director for um, uh, the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists. And I'm also the producing artistic director of a very small um, the theater company called Leviathan Lab, which is um, which focuses in on um, early career Asian American uh, theater artists. Great, thank you, Ariel. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we'll start the conversation first with uh, Christina Louie. Um, maybe you could help um, give a context. I, you know, there's lots of headlines. I, I know you've done a little research on the statistics, but giving a context for everything that's been going on in, in the last year, but even before that, you know, with, with the violence, you know, that's led to this artist conversation today. Sure, thank you, Robert. I don't know that we can have this conversation without acknowledging the video that many of us have seen that happened a couple of days ago, where 65 year old Bill McCary was viciously stomped and kicked and attacked in the middle of the day in Midtown Manhattan, not far from where the Barrow Group is, and there were a number of building staff, including a delivery man who watched it happen and didn't appear to do too much. That's just something that happened a few days ago in New York City. In the last week and a half alone, there have been a number of additional incidents, including a 54 year old Asian American woman in the Lower East Side who was smashed in the face with a metal pipe, including a woman who was attending last Sunday an anti-Asian hate crime protest with her seven year old daughter who was punched in the face. This is just in New York City. And I'm not even talking about what happened earlier this month with the shootings in Atlanta in which six Asian American women were killed. But let's look at the numbers for a second. In New York City, between 2019 and 2020, anti-Asian hate crimes increased by 933%. That's a shocking number. In the United States, between 2019 and 2020, anti-Asian hate crimes increased by 150%. And this is at a time when crime overall decreased by 7%. Stop AAPI Hate reports that 3,800 anti-Asian crimes occurred in the first year of the pandemic. These are horrible numbers. 
And I think there might be a tendency to assume that this is all related to the coronavirus or that this is all the fault of the Trump administration's tweets about the Kung flu or the Chinese virus. But I think it's helpful to put this in context. And the context is that there is a long history of anti-Asian discrimination and hatred in the United States, stemming back to the 1800s, including the 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act, including the internment of Japanese Americans in World War II, including even the case in the 1980s of a young man named Vincent Chin, who was beaten to death with a baseball bat and his killers were apprehended and given the paltry sentence of three years in probation um, and a $3,000 fine. And I mentioned that because a number of movies and plays have been written about this. But something really terrible is going on right now. And I, I guess I would throw it back to the rest of the people on the panel to talk about what's going on. Is this, is this the result of social media where these kind of videos are disseminated much more widely? Is this a generational difference in the way Asian Americans are talking about race issues? Or is there actually some kind of connection to the coronavirus? I'm really curious to hear what the rest of you think about this. Sure, may I jump in there, Christina? Yes, please. Uh, I just want to up, uh, absolutely uplift that uh, in terms of the historical context. And I'm going to add um, that one of the biggest lynchings in, uh, in American history was a Filipino people um, in the, uh, in, uh, California and Stockton, um, with uh, with the history of sort of, of Filipino people going up and down the coast of um, of the West Coast, following salmon, following apple apples, following oranges, all those seasons, uh, and they were basically iterant workers, um, and were often lynched like all the time uh, for possibly uh, you know be daring to even talk to anybody white, basically, particularly white women. Um, as racism doesn't necessarily work the same for every, uh, because Asian people aren't all the same, <laughs> where the, the diaspora is very wide. And so it, fol it follows a whole gamut of like how people are treated. Um, and generally the, the uh, brown Asians are, can also go through some things that are, um, can be analogous to the, to the black experience. Um, and I will also say that uh, this typically happens around pandemics. I will say it is connected partly to the virus because it's partly how Asians are seen by white supremacy, which is that we're dirty, um, that uh, we're, <laughs> we're seen as model minorities until, it's in, until a scapegoat is needed. And then we're often seen as akin to disease. And um, this has ha that happened with yellow fever. It's happened with other pandemics in, historically in American history. Right, thank you, Ariel. Christy or Christine, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, I, I do think it's a combination of everything you mentioned, Christina. There's the history of xenophobia that goes centuries uh, back and, um, and the exacerbation of everything that Ariel mentioned because of the the past, uh, our past president um, insisting on placing the blame on people that look like us um, and social media spreading the um, information. Um, and I was on a panel recently where someone said, um, you know, the Asian Americans have been have really been silent up until now and now they're speaking out and I said uh, that is absolutely not true we have been screaming into the wind <laughs> we have been screaming into the wind and unfortunately it's taken publicized murders well publicized murders to bring uh, enough outrage to to the larger public to to notice um, so I do think it's a combination of, of everything. It, it's come to a, a, a particular kind of boiling point right now. And then Christy, yeah, sorry, go for Yeah, real quick, yeah, um, I agree with everything everyone said on here. Um, the United States seems to have a pattern of immigrating people from different countries and, uh, for their cheap labor, and then trying to chase them out or keep them down um, when if they stay or just chase them out to get, tell them to go back to their country. Um, 
yeah, there's all over the West Coast after the 1849 gold rush and then after the railroads were built, so many, so many cities just burn Chinese, you know, and Chinatowns, you know, to get Chinese people out of their cities. Um, so I do think that there's just, there's this huge history and that can't be ignored, I agree. Uh, but it did get worse, you know, with orange man, um, <laughs> calling it China virus, Kung flu. Um, I, 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 don't, I can't speak for everyone on this panel, but I, I know that as soon as that happened, we were screwed. Um, I, I, I knew this was gonna happen. You know, check our social media feeds. We were, we were telling y'all this is gonna happen. Racism is a virus, which is an organization Ariel is, you know, uh, works for. I mean, start selling t-shirts. We started, you know, all these organizations started last March. You know, that's how we're able to track these hate crimes, you know, because we started doing the research. We started chronicling everything that was happening to us. So I agree um, with Christine. People might think that, you know, I think you said we're, that we're speaking into the wind, but no, it's it just when you don't hear us, it feels like we're just speaking into a void. But now, you know, with the Atlanta, you know, murders, I hope people, I, I think we now can't be ignored, you know, I hope no one's ignoring us now. And, and if they're hearing us, I hope they're really listening. Great, thank you, Christy. Um, so the next question, um, Christine, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it over your way. Um, we've sort of started getting into it, but I'm curious, what, what are your, 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 again, whatever you're comfortable sharing, but what, what are your personal thoughts on this escalation and, and what, what's been going on? Wow, well, that's a very big question. It's a it, it's a painful time. It is a painful time for all, all of us that, um, uh, to um, th there comes a point where you know you've been sort of navigating the perpetual foreigner assumption, the the accusations about us not belonging here or not being American, which is, I know is, is re directly related to the perpetual foreigner assumption, um, the exclusion, the, you know, all of it. Uh, and I think that we've, we've uh, spent, I'm talking about just my, per, my particular close knit community. Um, we're resilient. We've, we've learned how to persevere and, and just, just keep doing what we want to do and the, and the work especially as, as theater artists or, or um, uh, people in this industry. But it is, we are not okay. <laughs> we are just not okay. I, you know, I, I consider myself to be a very independent person. I travel a lot. I, um, I, I love New York City. I'm, I'm one of these um, people who die hard New Yorker and I, don't want to go anywhere by myself, um, and it's it's sad and 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 enraging to feel like, you know, I'm halfway vaccinated. And I'm thinking, oh, in two weeks I will feel like I can go out again. Oh, never mind. No, I can't. And uh, and also to be af afraid for my parents. My parents are are, are older and. I'm sending my my six foot tall non Asian husband to, with them to be their bodyguard to get their their vaccines and um, so it's there there's a lot it's it's a lot of that and then also because I have been involved for so many years um, advocating for full inclusion in the arts um, and working with the Asian American Performers Action Coalition. Um, and through equity and my, I'm on the elected leadership of the Dramatists Guild. What has happened is interesting because I've, I've, I've got, gotten a different understanding of what all of those battles are for from a personal point of view to get this deeper understanding that there is a direct line between underrepresentation, perpetuation of harmful stereotypes, all the way to dehumanization of us as a people and erasure, all the way to now it's become a life or death issue because all of those things add up to a general understanding that we are expendable. And so that, that has been really deep and uh, I keep saying the same word painful. Yeah, yeah, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, Robert, I, can I follow up on something Christine said? There's something that really struck me, and that is the fear. I'm, I'm scared for my father. He goes to Chinatown on a regular basis because that's his community. And I'm scared for him when you look at a lot of the people who are being targeted, they're middle-aged or older people. I think Asians are often seen as soft targets that they're not going to fight back. And it, the level of fear is such, Pew Research actually uh, ran a statistic that said 26% of Asian Americans are currently afraid that somebody is going to threaten or physically attack them. I mean, this fear is really profound. I think you've got a hundred percent right here on this panel, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Ariel or Christy, anything you want to add to that? Again, whatever you're comfortable, but personal thoughts on what's going on. Uh, I know that I, uh, the set, just uplifting what Christy said about the second, uh, the, literally the day uh, uh, 45 said something like his, his most, the very first day he said something, I was immediately accosted on the street that day. Literally that day, I was followed by somebody that was, you know, basically threatening me and said that I don't belong here with all the normal stuff. Luckily, I've had a fair amount of bystander and self-defense training. So I knew to just sort of keep walking, keep going, go into some place, um, go to some place as crowded as possible, got ready, was getting ready to yell if I had to, and uh, run as my as far as my uh, terrible knees can carry me, but it you know to basically to not uh, to get out and de-escalate the situation as fast as possible. Unfortunately, not many people know how to do that, um, which makes me very glad for organizations like Hollaback and uh, our Christine and Christie's and Christine. I don't know if you know him, but our dear colleague Dax Valdez, who is a fantastic actor and choreographer, but he's also a um, de-escalation trainer uh, uh, for, and a bystander and upstander trainer for Hollaback, which is doing amazing work uh, for teaching people to basically be more aware of their surroundings and what to do in situations if they see um, violence about to happen, right? And how to de-escalate it as soon as possible. Right. I know uh, some of you may know Sumi Kim, wonderful, wonderful director, uh, works here in New York. She's starting to do some self-defense classes in uh, that are, and I'm uh, probably will help her promote those at some point. Um, you know, and then <laughs> it, there's various ways that people can um, can learn how to try to de-escalate the situation. Um, and I know that's probably the it's one of the hardest things for us to do for Asian people to, is to be loud uh, and use their voice because we're historically and culturally um, not taught how to use our voices in situations like this. Keep your head down, just get it done. You know, don't, don't fight, don't fight. This is not the time to not fight <laughs> and to not know. And most importantly to, this is the time for us to know that we are worth saving, we are worth to, worth um, living another day. We're worth, we're um, everything, we are everything that white supremacy says that we're not, which mean, <laughs> which is that we're not worth anything uh, and that we're dirty and that we're not, uh, that we don't deserve to be here. And we do, we absolutely do. And there, this is the time to believe in that very, very strongly and to fight for it. Christy, yeah. God, Ariel, you're gonna get me in tears 20 minutes in. Um, <laughs> uh, fun fact, Dax went to high school with my brother, uh, School of the Arts, San Francisco. Um, yeah, oh my gosh, uh, just again, everything everyone's saying is is resonating so much. Um, you know, Christine, thank you so much for sharing that um, you're not okay. Um, Laurel Manning, who teaches uh, TBG, Ariel Beth Klein uh, teaches as well. They reached out to me on that Wednesday and text me, you know, um, sending love. And I, I, for the first time, admitted that I, I was not okay, you know? And, and I don't say that, uh, like, I'm a strong person, but I didn't want to lie about it anymore, you know? I think we've been hearing these stories. They've been coming in maybe one at a time, but like six Asian women who look like the beautiful women on this panel right now is hard to ignore. And it's, it's hard to tell people you're okay when you're not. Um, and I will say, you know, 
I started disguising myself for the past two weeks. I put a hat on, shades, face mask, just anything I could do to hide my Asian-ness. Um, I know that's a privilege I have that my black and brown, you know, colleagues do not. Um, it was a Nintendo hat, which in hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have picked the biggest Japanese video game company to hide my Asian-ness. But my point is, I did, right? And 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 that's that's it. Like I've we're, we're scared to go out now, you know? And we are taking my friend, Karen Kawamoto, she's so lovely. She's been offering, her friend Hannah's been offering free self-defense classes. Like that's where we are now, you know? Um, but what I wanna say is what I hope, and, and you know, we'll continue to talk is, I, you know, I hope people hear us and see our pain and will be spurred into action to help us because we are your fellow Americans. And like Ariel said, we deserve to live another day and safely. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, everyone. Um, so, so Ariel, can we, we pivot over to you next to sort of, sort of broaden the conversation? We've already started touching, started touching on it um, around the de-escalation, but what is it, so the Barrow Group's an arts organization. What is it that an arts organization can do at this moment in time? Yes, there's a, a lot that you can do. And I just also want to, um, to go plus one to Christine's comment about how some of this is absolutely tied into representation and tied into how Asian people have been portrayed on stage and screen, um, usually from the white gaze, G-A-Z-E, and that it's always how, how we're seen by, by white folks, right? As opposed to actually how we are seen. And Christine herself is a fabulous playwright who creates, uh, who creates wonderful stories about us and our stories from our point of view. Um, and there are any number of wonderful playwrights and screenwriters who are doing that now. Uh, and we're finally, finally, it's, Christine and I have been doing this, like, doing this work for a very long time um, and uh, have, have commiserated much on, uh, you know, on just how slow that work is. And we just started seeing some of the fruits of that start to happen. We were have going through at the, um, very beginning of the pandemic, there was a renaissance in Asian American theater and in TV and film that was starting to happen, right off Broadway and Broadway. Um, and then of course, pandemic happened, some of that stuff slowed down, but I think something that is heartening is that uh, I've just been seeing all of my colleagues and all of my Asian American colleagues and friends like continue to create and continue, especially now, um, in response to uh, the rise in anti-Asian violence and seeing them write and create artistic responses and raising awareness around it. And in terms of artistic organizations, uh, <laughs> all the Asian American affinity um, theaters are already doing this type of work. Um, we would love to see more PWIs, uh, primarily white institutions get involved. It's great to see the statements um, it would be, you know, one of the, the heavy comments <laughs> towards primarily white institutions and deservedly so is that many of their Black Lives Matter statements, for example, were pretty, pretty hollow and marketing, <laughs> basically marketing ploys. Uh, and then they didn't do any follow through. Some are, to be fair, some wonderful uh, PWIs are doing the work and following through. We need the same thing with this. Um, to me, that to my mind, this is all part of the same um, terrible racism that's coming out uh, as a result, uh, or being more celebrated, honestly, um, by our our former president, uh, and currently still being um, promoted by people who are angry, unemployed, and uh, under or underemployed because of the pandemic. Um, in terms, so. Primarily white institutions, please issue your support. Please make it more than just um, hollow statements that you're using as a marketing ploy, <laughs> right? There actually has to be action. And that includes commitments to hiring more um, folks of color, hiring more folks of the global majority, uh, theater artists, and letting us tell our stories and not telling their stories through a white lens. Um, I'm gonna put, uh, Kata's state um, page right here right now because we have a crisis response page. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong link. Uh, a crisis response page with a video that we created with uh, 
uh, TCG with many of our friends. Christine is actually part of that video um, uh, with the Theater Artists Against Anti-Asian Hate, a video called uh, Strong Together and Stronger Than Ever, directed by uh, my wonderful colleague, Elena Chung from uh, Theater Communications Group and many, many, many people, Kelly Leung, Leia Salonga, Conrad Recamora, uh, Mark De La Cruz, Francis Ju, all some wonderful luminaries of the Asian American theater scene and film scene. Um, tomorrow, April 2nd, uh, there is going to be, let me put that link in <laughs> to the, uh, oh, we've also, sorry, uh, I'm gonna say this. We also issued a statement, Kata, um, to about anti-Asian hate and also about what uh, some of the actions that we're doing. In that there's a link where you can sign up to be part of theater artists um, against anti-Asian hate and find out about some of the initiatives that we're working on. Uh, Kara in particular is going to be working on a HowlRound series um, about uh, that is going to be focusing in um, at least uh, in, in the immediate um, immediate time frame on on combating anti-Asian hate, including resources for us as a community on healing. Uh, we're going to uh, be getting some work on with, with Hollow, Hollaback to do some, uh, do some bystander training, possibly some self-defense training. Um, and uh, to me, one of the most important things is actually the, the, the healing training, right? So that we start to, because if we, it all starts with us, if we don't believe that we deserve to be to defend ourselves, then everything else doesn't follow, right? So, um, and that we deserve to be here. <laughs> Not the you can train to be uh, train in all the uh, de-escalation training that you want, but unless you believe that you, we deserve to be here um, and are actively working to fight against those mes the messages that we don't belong, um, it can be hard to continue. <laughs> um, and one more thing. Just wanted to uh, share a page from Kata uh, that we're uh, of that very first meeting that we did uh, where there were 300 people, 400 people in the room, I believe. <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, it was so incredible moving. Experience. Yeah. 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 To see, two, I, I think it was a couple, well, how many, how many of our hundred people, but just uh, Asian American theater makers just populate the Zoom three. And it was, it, it, that community is everything, I have to say. You know, and then really. Just, did a statement too, right? Just yeah. Me. Yeah. Oh, and then one, uh, I don't have the link with me, unfortunately. Oh, wait. Uh, I do want to uplift something that TCG is doing tomorrow that, um, that Christine's colleague from APAC. Uh, mm -hmm. People don't know APAC, it's the Asian American Performers Arts Coalition, and they are amazing. You guys have done amazing work. And you want an Obi yeah, <laughs> for your work. Want an Obi, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they, uh, her colleague Pun Bandu and my colleague and Leslie Ashi from President of Kata, Clint Ramos um, are going, and Young Jean Lee are going to be speaking on a panel tomorrow um, with, uh, with responses to anti Asian violence. So that was a long answer about what to do, <laughs> but there's a lot to do. That's great. Short answer. I, I, I'm curious. Could, could you speak a little bit more about the the healing side of it? Um, I, I I don't know. That's yeah. I I've heard about how do you protect yourself physically, but <clears throat> it's the first time I've thought about also just the the deep the deep work about messaging of you do belong. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. Who wants yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I think that it is absolute self care is absolutely uh, vital right now, and various communities are coming together to to do that. I I was asked to um, to help facilitate a, a AAPI kind of a healing circle. I think they're calling it through Queens Theater in the Park. That's starting, I think, April thirteenth, where where we just provide a space for people to get together and. And be able to, like Christy said, you know, some, sometimes we've been uh, we've been reticent to admit that we're not okay because it's such a, you know, it's uh, can be perceived as a sign of weakness or whatever. But I think when we sit in community together, and we allow each other to just talk about it, um, it's it's a it's something. 
it's something. And so there are other, there are other organizations that are coming together. There are resources that um, the Dramatist Guild also put out a beautiful statement, and we we included some st uh, resources for for Martin, mental health. Thank professionals. you so much, Laurel. But thank so you so much. I think we're, we're uh, so grateful for all your artistic out uh, ways to, to deal with this weather. Everyone on a, stay safe on a, on a, and stay healthy. You know, and, just get um, get together with your friends we'll you um, okay. to well, larger and larger that. gatherings. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, healing. Um, yeah. May I, is that right, Robert? May I? Okay. No, um, yeah. yeah, I'll add to that that, um, yeah, self, self care, healing is so important at this point. Um, I will say, you know, I'm not trying to put anyone on the spot, but I got a lot of messages from non POCs after, you know, um, asking, how are you? And, you know, that puts a lot of emotional burden on us to respond. And I got so many messages. I just stopped responding. Um, I put an out of office message, oh, oh, uh, excuse me, out of office uh, message on my email um, because I just decided nothing is more important than my grieving and my healing right now, you know? So um, if any of you need to use those tools, please do. Um, I completely agree. Like we have to take care of ourselves, you know, in our community before we can be there for like other people. Um, I'll just, I just want to quickly just circle back a little bit to, you know, the original question posed to Ariel, um, just since I'm on, on, on the muted anyway. Um, you know, I just want to say, you know, when BIPOC folks are not given the same opportunities as our white colleagues, like we will create our own spaces. Um, Ariel's Leviathan Lab, which by the way, is not a small organization. <laughs> Ariel, don't talk small about what you do. You're amazing. Leviathan's amazing. Um, all my friends speaks so so highly of all the work they did with you and leviathan um you know but i mean east that's east west players Pennington rep natco um asian american theater company in san francisco my is killing it theater moo um nap you know natco um we create our own spaces right um but what i hope pwis thank you for this this term that i learned today Ariel. um what i hope pwis have learned throughout this transitional time is the value, the true, true value of diverse storytelling. Um, you know, before they closed Signature Theaters Residency, five playwrights were, I mean, they had Lauren Yee. I could not get tickets to Cambodian Rock Band because they kept selling out. Katori Hall, Kiera Hudes, um, Dominique Morisot, who is a goddess. I mean, and they were selling out that big theater and their show. So you can't tell me that Black, Latin, you know, Asian shows don't sell because they do. Um, so, you know, I, I just, I hope people are taking this time to really look and I, I'm not trying to bite the hand that feeds me, but I think TBG also needs to look at themselves as well. Um, my opinion is that awake was incredible and it should be the norm, not the exception. I, I'm gonna go plus one to that um, because, you know, the white, white organization, white led organizations still have a long ways to go and it needs to be necessary, made necessary. You know, there is, and not just seen as something that, oh, uh, that they don't, they sort of intellectually understand that. Uh, and I've heard this from many of my um, uh, friends from the global majority who work for PWIs, right? That they also, uh, that, the, that the white folks, <laughs> look, racism is sort of white people's problem uh, and that they need to fix it, right? And that, but most often that burden gets placed on the, on the people of the global majority who work in those institutions, right? It's not our responsibility. <laughs> it's, it's yours, white folks, fix it. And, it's, and it needs to be urgent. <laughs> and it needs to be, this is the work of our time other than, other than of course, uh, climate change, right? Um, because with both these things, we're not gonna survive as a, as a species. <laughs> unless we do this work and it needs to be done. Um, and yeah, sorry, wow, I just got really <laughs> emotional there, but it needs, that work can't, uh, for example, well, um, uh, LA, you know, LA Stage Alliance uh, with what happened, just happened at the Ovation Awards in Los Angeles. That's appalling, it's appalling. For those of you who don't know what happened, um, they, were, they had one of the cast members of, uh, of a show that was done with Fountain Theater and uh, East West Players, uh, the <laughs> Jale Lee, they awarded, they confused her with another member of the cast. And they also erased um, East West Players from 
um, both the productions of uh, The Great Leap and, um, oh my gosh, not Edith can shoot things and hit them. Um, <laughs> the other one, sorry, blanking on it because I'm, so, I'm emotional right now. Anyway, they uh, really made a, a huge racist error that can only come from, uh, from white supremacist practices. Um, those things need to be fixed right away. <laughs> they fixed right away. It need to be, you know, at the very least, uh, white organizations need to take racism seriously because often they don't. And with an organization as big and uh, that has supposedly had already done the, this kind of work, thanks to part, no, no small part to um, uh, Tim Dang over at East West Players and Leslie Ashi from Kata, they did a lot of work trying to get. Um, along with, their, with other colleagues of the global majority, trying to get um, LA stages to uh, alliance to, to be better. And they did, and then they completely backslid with this, with the Ovation Awards this year. Um, when you hear about this stuff, please spread the word. And like, yeah, I mean, social media can be a very powerful tool in this respect. <laughs> um, and we can start using it for good as opposed to what our previous president used it for. I'd like to also say that I think um, and having all of these conversations, especially sort of uh, tenfold over the last uh, over the last month, that what I keep hearing and uh, from other artists is that this desire to um, just to be have us all be open to knowing that we don't know everything and that we're, that that to be open to really learning more about one another and that includes us so but that that it really would carry through in a very good way throughout the industry and and so when something like this happens in in the ovation awards that the 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 work involves also just being able to admit that you don't know everything and that you might have something to learn and that you might need to be more conscious of of these kinds of um, it could be a, called a gaffe it could be called a faux pas or it could be called a, you know a blind spot there are a lot of different things so I would just like to put that out there too that to that we all need to, I don't know we we need to talk about that more frankly. Oh, and I just want to say sorry I, that I forgot the name of the show at the moment. It's Jihei Parks, and she's a wonderful playwright and actor, uh, Hannah and the Dread Gazebo. So, uh, Christina Louie, I'm, I'm curious if, I know you're not, well, you're the, you were the former board chair of the Barron Group, but what are your thoughts on arts organizations and, and what we can do? I think the rest of the panelists have just expressed so perfectly the role of arts organizations in terms of representation and healing and community building. I mean, they've said it perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, so, so we're running out of time. Maybe the last thing we could do, I don't wanna presume on your time, is sort of a lightning round. Um, and and the, the question or the topic is, what is it that individuals, we've talked about, you know, what can arts organizations do talked about just your own thoughts and feelings about this. What is it that individuals can do to take action here and now to, to combat this racism? Yeah, I'll, I'll kick us off. Um, my answer actually, I'll, I'll try to talk fast, but I, it's, it's not oh, short. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to, I'm going to break this out into two categories. Um, one is, you know, our, our fellow um, Asians in the arts and then folks, you know, not in the arts and entertainment industry. Um, you know, to my fellow Asian creatives, I always say to my screenwriting students, you are the best person to tell your story. And I will add to that now, we need your stories more than ever. We need your beautiful, handsome faces on screen. We need you directing. We need you producing. Um, we need your beautiful music to score. We just, we need you because your stories contribute to the social fabric that is our American society. And I say our American society, because as you've heard from this panel, I'll say it again, we belong here. We were born here. Our parents, you know, our, our parents, grandparents, Chris, for Christine, it's great, great, great grandparents were born here. You know, our ancestors from here. So, you know, um, just 
in the words of our goddess Sandra, oh, keep shining, keep going. Um, so for, and for folks who are not in the industry, you know, we need you too, we hella need you. Um, there's more of you than us. So um, there's just, there's so many things that you can do. And I'm, you know, if you've read any article, seen anything online, you know, but, you know, um, lift up stories by, you know, Asian storytellers, donate to organizations, volunteer, join a protest, um, push for more diversity and inclusion in, you know, your workplaces, your company boards, your schools, um, educate yourself on the history of Asians in the U.S. I'm going to shamelessly plug um, my cousin's book, uh, The Chinese Must Go. I'll drop a link in the, uh, when I'm done. Um, she's a, uh, the first Asian American history professor at Princeton, um, and, she, and her book is great. Um, but here's, here's what I don't want you to do, okay? If, if I could just say this one thing, like, so, you know, as um, Christina mentioned earlier, you know, Bill Makari was so severely beaten in broad daylight, not far from the Barrett group. Um, and the security guard, you know, delivery men did nothing. Um, thank God she survived. I, I was across town on 43rd Street and 2nd Avenue when that happened. I'm really scared to think that I could have been his next victim if he kept going east. I'm not sharing that to get your sympathy. I'm sharing that because any one of us on this panel could be next, okay? Like, because racism and racial violence knows no exception, right? Oh, you're a nice person. I'm not going to beat you. No, like, it's not. They just see us and they'll do what they want to do, right? And they're not just attacking our elders. You know, they're attacking our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our aunts, our aunties, our parents, you know, our friends. We could, any one of us could be next. So my point is, please don't be that security guard. Don't be that delivery person. Do not shut the door on people in pain and suffering. Don't stand by and do nothing. Just do something, whatever that looks like for you. You can choose one of the options, four of the options, whatever, but just do something. Don't stand by and be a silent witness because we need all of you to help us because none of us want to be the next one. Thanks. Thank you, Christy. So eloquent, thank you. Um, who, who would like to go next? Oh boy. Um, yeah, sure, I, I will. Um, you know, and this is something that I've been doing with my, my entire career, but particularly with Leviathan Lab, um, my, my company, which is specifically for um, early and mid-career Asian American theater artists, that it's always been my philosophy to, um, once you've gotten to a certain level of experience, you always bring people up, help bring them up. This isn't about, this isn't a, uh, especially with the sort of the very tight knit Asian American community that we have, we're always sort of like helping each other up, right? It's just good business. We're not in comp. I mean, of course we're in competition because that's the way capitalism works. But I try to generally ignore that and go like, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to uh, let's celebrate you. Let's bring you. Let's. Oh, here's a job. Here's something that. Here's an opportunity that you can do. Constantly looking to bring people up, and every year, ugh, uh, not this, not last year for obvious reasons, but. Every year I meet with, um, with mostly Asian artists, but increasingly more artists of, of, of the global majority. Um, and they're always talking about their, uh, their traumatic experiences at their training programs. And I always have to tell them, you didn't imagine it. It happened to you. The training was racist and colonialist and you experienced some pretty extreme racism and you are, are undergoing trauma right now, and I'm very sorry that happened to you. And every, it happened to me 30, 30 years ago at my acting training program, and unfortunately it's still happening, right? So what we got here is a, a systemic problem, and it's called white supremacy, and that we need to do absolute changes to that system. Part of changing that system is to help people Part of that change in that system is learning the difference between equality and equity and liberation. And I'm just going to put this one of my favorite articles about that here. Um, in He's the, quick with the links. You're, I'm impressed, Ariel. You got them. So you got them all. <laughs> I've been doing so many of these Zoom. <laughs> but uh, but learning the the difference between those things and like the true liberation 
is really sort of getting rid of the, if you've ever seen that that image, right, about the, the, the brown people at the, black brown people at the fence of watching a baseball mm -hmm. game, right? It's about getting rid of the fence, <laughs> right? And making it so that everybody has access, right? And helping each other do that. So for if you're, and if you're a white ally, um, using your privilege mm -hmm. to recognize that, look, um, this work of equity, equality, and liberation. Yeah, it means that that means that people have to be given e <laughs> given equal access. Which means, yeah, you probably will lose some of your access because that's what white supremacy does. It gives you more access than we do, and it's not fair, and it shouldn't be done. Oh, plus one. Add to that real quick. Recognize you have white privilege too, and then can do the work because some people don't recognize that they got it. Mm -hmm. Oh, those comments you were talking about earlier, Christine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would just like to add also that this is this might seem like a subtle, small thing, but I think it could be very large. If if people could really take a good hard look at how much unconscious bias they might have, and not realize it, how many times you might naturally go along with a stereotype that is being presented in the media and think and accept it. Um, and that that has that has to do with um, again with being open to listening to stories and, and understanding that there is a there's a long history of xenophobia and uh, my my cousin is also a rock star historian Christy Erica Lee who has written amazing books uh, American America for Americans is the most uh, widely um, put out there right now I don't have a link, the link. <laughs> <laughs> but I but it is it is really important I think to to um, to understand the, the history where we've come from and that this is not just a year-long problem or you know just of the last even couple of couple of weeks but this is um has been going on for a really long time and to to be open to really understanding what that what that means and and when people say well this isn't who we are um it, it unfortunately it is it, it is a lot of who we are and and how america has has kind of put blinders to various problems of, um, of oppression. So all of that, it's a lot, it's a lot, but it's, uh, you know, what we have to do to, to, to keep moving forward in the ways that we aspire to as a, as a country. Great, thank you, Christine. Mm -hmm. Christina Louie, any, any final thoughts? No, oh, kitty cat, welcome. <laughs> this, this is Dee Dee. <laughs> I'm just listening to all of you and thinking for me, and I'm probably one of the only non artists on this panel. For me, it's about finding my voice. Um, I come from a family and a culture and a generation where you didn't really talk about this, particularly not publicly. And for me, getting involved with the barrel group, being on this panel, talking to friends about these issues, I'm maybe further further back in my path than the rest of you. But for me, finding my voice is really a critical part. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Um, okay, so it's five, well, it's past 5.45, it's 5.54. So we're gonna, we're gonna start wrapping this up now. Um, I, 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 I wanna just thank each and every one of you. I mean, sincerely from the bottom of my heart being here, it's, as everyone has said, it's, it's a painful time and, and getting up in this public way and speaking about it, there's tremendous bravery. So, you know, Christina, thank you for bringing your voice. Thank you, everyone. For bringing your your voice and your passion, I'm getting emotional now too. Thank you for not hiding. Um, I, I'll own for myself. I'm half Chinese. I grew up in the South, and and I hid. I was taught to hide for decades, and it's just now that I, like Christina Louie, am, am really grappling and and embracing that that journey for myself. So thank you all for your bravery. It's inspiring for me, and, and I hope for many people who are, who are watching. Um, so, so I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, uh, for those watching via Zoom or Facebook Live, there, there are a lot of yeah, Ariel. I, I don't know how many links. Maybe there's a hundred links, but they're great. Um, I think you should be able, if you're interested, to to copy them from there. Um, I, I know that, that Farah, who's been helping the stage manage this, has also added some links 
the, the links that FAIR has added are organizations yeah, doing their best to create more justice. Um, if you're so inclined, please check them out. Maybe even consider making a donation uh, is, 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 it's of course, a worthy cause. Um, so, so yeah, I'm going to wrap it up now. I think Farah's is going to press end, but, but so we're all going to get disconnected. I wish I could connect with you all more, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been so beautiful spending this time with you and, and please take good care. Thank you for holding the space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.